welcome to the Real Triathlon Podcast. I'm your host, Garrick Lowen, here with Nicholas Chase and Jackson Lund. All right, welcome back to the Real Triathlon Podcast. I am delighted. It's been a minute or two since we've had our colleague and uh, fellow news agent or aficionado, Matt Sharp, on board. Matt, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, I've been doing a lot of newsing, you know, all that, all that good stuff with, uh, you know, great to join my colleague today. I love it. Uh, you just won a pretty decent race. How'd that go? Yes. So race in New York city. Try, uh, was it last weekend? Yeah. Last weekend. Yeah. Um, and yes, ended up taking the win. Uh, although it was a duathlon. It was a sprint uh, finish too. It was very close, very close, uh, with Michael Arashida, who, I don't know if you, do you know him? Do you know Michael much? I know that he came out of the woodwork for that race. I haven't heard his name in the circuit since Bear Lake Brawl back in 2020. That's hilarious. Um, I've known him, I feel like, in triathlon circles for a long time. It's just he's been kind of holding it down, doing short course stuff for, I feel like, the last four years, kind of exclusively. Um, and so now he's swapping a, swapping a long course. And the guy, like, trains crazy, uh, from what I understand. So definitely has the physiological capability to, to do well. And, and you kind of saw that uh, in that race. I mean, he was pushing me, like, do you want me to go through the race a little bit? Because it was kind of an intriguing race. Yeah, I'd love to hear about the race, especially since I've got a little backstory. I was at Malibu Triathlon with, yes. the, with the owner or CEO of um, Lifetime New York. Yes. And I was walking up to this group of people all huddled together. And I was like, what do you got? Let's go. This looks stressful over here. And they're like, yeah, we've had a lot of rain in New York and we're trying to figure out if we're going to be able to swim or not. And I was like, oh shit, that is a pro race. Yeah. T.O., that's where he's going to do his best work. Um, and he was there. So I was wondering how that race was going to go while we were racing Super League in Malibu. But I would absolutely, oh, speaking of that, I'm back mm -hmm. to Arashida. He is known amongst the Super League demographic of workers as the guy who jumped in for one of his second swims with his shoes on still so yes i do i think you should you should get on this podcast eventually. he's an interesting dude he's got actually quite a um extensive educational background in sports the geology and stuff so i'm sure we could have some good conversation definitely a good guess i'd recommend yeah that'd be great okay yeah. so you wake up race morning did they make the call of a duathlon to that level already yeah, so it was funny because when I flew into New York on Friday, people were like texting me like, oh my God, are you okay? There's flooding. And they, it all kind of happened, I guess, that morning and night before. And yeah, in like Brooklyn, not where I was in Brooklyn, in those areas, like crazy flooding. Um, so there's a lot of runoff and and they made the right decision, the race organizers, Saturday, whenever on Saturday to make the make a duathlon on Sunday. So they did that. So we knew on Saturday that we were racing a duathlon the next day. Um, and that was great. Like, I think ultimately it's funny when people have to make this call, um, you know, you get some grumbling, Hey, what, what are we no, not doing a swim? But it's like, you'd rather have that than, uh, you know, half your field sick afterwards. As we've seen this year, I think with some of these races that uh, have gone through in these kind of interesting conditions. Ready. So you wake up, you know what's going to happen, no big deal. You're not going to get yeah. sick. That feels good. Yeah, athletes from Singapore and from the Paris test event all got some crud. So I guess it's good you did not probably swim. Yeah, definitely better for the PR after the race um, to, to not have, you know, 1,800 athletes uh, maybe deal with some gut issues after. So they made the right call. Um, yeah, the, the race itself they started us where the swim was. So in some duathlons, they might start with like a 5k run or something, but this one was literally just two kilometers, you know, just over a mile, I guess. Um, so it was, it was fast. It, it, was, free -for -all. The guys were, it, it was crazy. The guys were flying and I was hanging on for dear life on this first, whatever, 2k. Um, it, it kind of settled a little bit just before we got into T1. Um, and so I just wanted to get out on the bike and, and really just kind, kind of like just shake things up. And, and so, yeah, I was hammering uh, just outside of T1. Wow. And I know this race is iconic because it actually is in New York. You finish in Central Park. I've never really paid attention. What is the bike course like? Yeah, I didn't, I should have paid more attention to the bike course. Cause when I got out there, I was like, oh damn, this is a lot hillier uh, than I was expecting. They were like, 
it's on the west side highway which i was like oh highway it's probably pretty uh pretty flat but uh no definitely undulating hills nothing like crazy but just good solid rollers um throughout and i was going yeah i was hammering like you know 400 plus watts up these hills just to try and maintain speed um and maybe cruise a little bit on the downhill but yeah after about i guess about halfway through um is when tim o'donnell came through mike arishida was he was behind me but i didn't think he was in my like anywhere near the draft zone because because of the undulation of the road and because of just the way i was kind of hammering uh the hills it wasn't really great for like trying to hang on um consistently so tim eventually came through and then he came through and kind of injected even more pace um and just it's more of a steady effort uh for the rest of the ride and it was quite hard for me because i definitely emptied a lot of the clip at the first half so hanging kind of just hanging on to tim tim o'donnell there for that second half of the bike was an effort uh and so we ended up coming into t2 together with myself uh tim o'donnell and uh, michael airshida and then the run course still not flat uh is it mostly uh, central park yeah so on like through transition uh mike absolutely roasted us uh, i think he got eight seconds or so in uh that t2 which for an olympic distance it's something it's it's not nothing um and so we started off you kind of go along this highway for a hot second and then turn left uh to go head towards central park and to get to central park you kind of go up i would say almost a mile of like uphill uh running and you know mike was up ahead he had this eight seconds and i was kind of like i was going pretty hard just to kind of maintain the gap i was like damn okay this guy's feeling good so i knew i had to it was kind of like the moment of the race where I was like, hey, I got to hammer this to get to him and at least put myself in a position to be successful. Otherwise, this race is over. Um, so I went to the absolute well, just destroyed myself, like just full full sprint, maybe over, I don't know, 400 meters or something, and Ooh. was able to make up the eight seconds. I got to him. I was so gassed and just like hanging on. And it was like that as we entered Central Park, and we still had like five miles left and it was very undulating kind of up and down. And the, the best and the worst part is we get to hear about all this from you. I mean, we didn't get to see it and it happened, but yeah. I love, I love the fact that athletes just describe it as pitting themselves into the well, like that pain is we've all felt that on some level. So it's great that you're able to capture it and it, and it paid off. I mean, I'm sure he, did he know you were coming? Did he know you were that close? You know, he, I'm sure he didn't ever count me out um, just because, you know, we've raced a bit over the years. And so he knows kind of my skill set and stuff. But yeah, seriously, it was, it was an inter super interesting run because when we got to Central Park, it was kind of a net downhill for the next, I don't know, two miles or, or something like that. And uh, I was just hanging on. You know, Mike was playing, a, I think he was playing a little bit of mind games with me because he would kind of like wave to people. And just he kind of play it off as if he was like fine, and I and I was almost taking him at face value. I'm like, damn, this guy feels good. I'm just like, shit, I need to hang on for dear life. And and so I was making some crazy noises. There's a lot of grunting uh, going on. Yes. Um, and, but I was able to hang with him, and, and he could tell like I was under pressure. I was not. There was no cards I was holding on to. Um, I only have one card at the end of the race, which I'm okay with. But uh, hanging on there for for a very long time. And, and I guess as we got to, I want to say, how many miles is it in 10K? Six miles? 6.2. 6.2. So probably at mile four, he finally kind of flicked me through a little bit. And I didn't even go through. Like, he was leading that whole time, basically. So up until mile four of, of six, he was leading. He was blessed. And Yeah, I, I was just, like, making noises and stuff. So he kind of flicked me through it. And, yeah, I hadn't, you know, sat in the front at all. So we ended up kind of running almost side by side a little bit. Um, but he was still kind of waving to people and giving <laughs> people thumbs up. And I'm just like, okay. He's like, I got whatever. this. Don't worry. Like, I'm just like, I'm just going to do whatever I can to, to hang on to the end. Um, and we, when we flipped, I think we had like another, maybe less than mile to the finish. And again, like on the way back, we were, he was still waving and, and blah, blah, blah. And, and I was like, okay, I'm getting close to the finish. I was just like, I just need to make that finish shoot. And I think I have a chance. 
uh, because he should have dropped me. The way he was um, gesticulating to the crowd and whatnot. Because <laughs> we were amongst, it's actually as an aside, you know, we're racing, but it's still open to Sunday joggers. And we're basically making our way through this crazy throng of like Sunday joggers. The lead bike has no chance trying to move people. It's not going to happen. It's New York. Uh, so that was hilarious too. So we're weaving around these like, you know, people out for a, a regular just Sunday run. Uh, yeah. And, and then kind of after that, we, you know, we were approaching this finishing straight and I was able to kind of get a good position on him when we made this one one eighty, probably like, yeah, 300 meters before the line. I was like, okay, he's not ahead of me now. I think I know I'm in a good place. Um, and so <laughs> we approached the final 100 meters, if that, and we kind of both were winding it up, but it was hilarious because we were both definitely like cramping at the <laughs> same time. So I look hilarious. I don't, there's a video out there of me doing the, the finish, but when I'm starting my kick, like I just went all in, but my, both my hamstrings were cramping. So instead of in a, in a sprint, you know, you might have a good leg, you know, the back. Like I was just high knees. Like I was just high knee <laughs> Harry towards this finish line, but I was gapping him. So I was like, okay, I think I got, so I just, just went all in and, and yeah, finally got to the, and broke the tape and yeah, but uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. You, you were just high stepping through the finish line. That is, that is iconic. Yeah. It was quite ugly. It was super ugly, but uh, sometimes you got to win ugly, I guess. No, winning ugly is the best way. I mean, that yeah. you don't want to win with your hair done, waving and kissing babies like Archie was trying to do. You want to be able to send it and, and kill it. So. Yeah, it, it was good for the crowd. I think they, you know, ultimately the crowd enjoyed it. So that's, that's you're just there to entertain, right? We're all just entertainers here. Yeah, that that is hilarious, man. I mean, hilarious and well done. Great. I love hearing the, metal, the metal battle of what happens within those neck and neck sprints, um, especially for a win. That's Sometimes you'll hear some athletes like, I've never wanted to quit something so bad in my life. And you're literally moments away from winning something. And like the mental struggle yeah. is real for all of us. Yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, not like I'm like, I'm not saying I felt super strong mentally the whole way through. Like there was a couple of times where he was sitting on me and I'm almost like, well, second's okay. You know, that kind of situation. But it's funny because this race, it was very top heavy for the prize money. So first was a lot better than second. So I was like, just hang on. Like, like it was a lot of incentives to uh, driving that, but um, yeah, you just, sometimes it's easy to be like, Hey, you know, second's okay or whatever. Like this guy's feeling good. Look at how he's waving to the crowd, but you just, you got to keep fighting until you can't. Do you, find, do you find like those efforts that you just put forth to take that win? Do you have, just a set amount of those efforts in you per year, or is that something you feel like you could just pull on out of the bag sometimes? Yeah. I mean, you don't, you can't spend those in training. How about that? Um, I would say like any race you'd line up, you should want to go to the well, you know, you work so hard, you want to get your most out of yourself, I guess in that sense. Um, maybe if you have a race next weekend, it's probably not a good idea, but yeah, definitely not something that you have every day. Um, that's definitely something, you know, when you're, running for the win or, or you're just, you, you just feel amazing and you just keep, you're able to keep pushing. Um, so yeah, I think I don't have, maybe I don't have that left in me this year, but who knows? I got one more race. So we'll find out. So let me guess you're doing Indian Wells. No, I'm going to the, uh, the Turkey trot. That's my, no, no, that's my <laughs> going, going to Indian Wells as the final race of the year. I would have gone cause I know there's one in uh, Mexico, but I actually can't leave the U.S. right now because of the the green card process. So I am racing in the U.S. That's the next one. Yeah, and um, this whole Super League endeavor has given me a great opportunity to get to know your other. I won't say better half because I always get pissed off when people say that about me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she is, but I get yeah. it. We won't. We won't say that. We just know no, it. No. Um, so I met your wife and got to hang out with her a bunch and i'm sure she's got some random stories of my ridiculous unorganized conscience. Yeah, yeah no it's all all good action all good action for sure um but i i definitely just i do my best matt that's all i can say yes i know that's all that's all you can do that's all you can do um and so it's been great to kind of keep it all in the family for um watching you race and then having uh the super league event and knowing that you know there's a both of you are racing at the same time. So that was cool. I had that in the back of my mind as I was processing the day's yeah. chaos. Um, so some other things, you know, what else have you been spending your time doing besides racing and training 
what, what is your life on the day-to-day? Yeah, no, good question. I mean, we kind of talked about this last time I was on uh, the pod, but uh, yeah, this this uh, news endeavor or, or media endeavor, whatever, startup endeavor, I don't know. You can put a label on anything. Um, yeah, this this newsletter I've been doing, the Tempo News, um, it's been taking up a lot of my time. Um, yeah, we we put out editions every Tuesday and Friday in this newsletter. It's, a, it's basically a five-minute you know, triathlon news recap. We have training tips, uh, just, you know, quick bite-sized digestible pieces of content that, uh, yeah, you can, you can finish pretty quickly, maybe with your morning coffee or something. Um, but that's been growing very steadily. We've also, uh, started a, um, kind of paid membership program with the tempo. So tempo pro, um, tempo, is, is pro. tempo pro, not oh. amateur. Oh, tempo pro. What about elite yeah. pro? Yeah, not, not quite. That's the next year, the next phase. <laughs> stage or something but uh yeah just just kind of building on that um building this you know kind of media thing um and so that's taking up a lot of time i'm definitely learning a lot uh just business and and whatnot so yeah definitely i feel like that's and i also with with her and i I help her as much as i can with her training and all that kind of stuff so yeah i guess are you coaching her no god no no thank you Thank you for keeping no, that. Would be so bad. Yeah. She, the funny thing is, if if she coached me, it would probably work out quite well. Um, I just think if I coached her, she wouldn't listen to me. She'd just be like, "No, you really don't do that." So <laughs> baffling to me when couples live together and train, like Ellie Salthouse and Zach Collins, yeah. her boyfriend. Like they're in St. George right now, and we, we always yeah. get along with them pretty well. And they like my my wife Amy and I were talking and. They're together nonstop all day, pretty much every day. I mean, sometimes Ellie will show up to a swim without Zach, but he's writing, yeah. writing some of her programs and they're <laughs> training together. And he's also coaching. It's like, man, you all, I love that. I, I want to hear the blow ups. I just want to hear them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I want to see how sad. Yeah, no, it's, it, it, it works. Like her coach, Nate Wilson, um, he coaches Floor Duffy and, and uh, a lot of cyclists, his background is cycling, but uh, he lives here in Boulder now. And yeah, she works with him and, and he's exceptional. He's a, he's a really good coach. Um, I've been able to learn a lot from him as well. So super, super awesome that way. That's great. Um, and also great to hear the tempo is doing well enough to be called pro level. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, yeah. Next, the next iteration, uh, the, the paid membership. So yeah, I, I guess in a sense, you know, what we do with that is, you know, we have the free newsletter that, is always going to be free and, and whatnot. But uh, we have this paid membership, which gives people access to these kind of more deep dive, um, deep dives on like uh, training topics. Like for example, we did the first one on fueling like a busy lifestyle. So we, you know, did a lot of stuff on nutrition and timing of nutrition. And then we actually, actually spoke with a sports nutrition performance coach the other day. And so just had a conversation and people could ask, you know, specific questions. And so, yeah, really, really just, deep into these topics that you know maybe folks are ready to kind of jump into the next level of learning about the sport is that going more digital or is that still like uh you know i i read these articles or are you going to do like a hey here's the the 15 second tempo update on your daily news you know i thought about that if we do do that like i'm not i what i like about the newsletter is is you know it's not about you know in social media obviously trying to get clicks and, and you got to do something to get clicks. And, you got to you gotta show some skin too, if you want to be. You do have to show some skin. You got to say some things that uh, maybe aren't so good, but uh, with a newsletter, it's a little more measured, a little bit more, I guess. Yeah. You just you don't have to chase that kind of stuff. You have maybe more in depth and, and deeper conversations. I like it. But if, we, but if we did do that kind of stuff, I'd probably do it on like TikTok or something and do like a 15 second news recap on TikTok, but I don't have the bandwidth for that at the moment. I know what that feels like. Yes, you probably better than me. For sure, uh, uh, I know you're, you're quite busy in all your endeavors. Just trying to do something different like you are. Like I see I see holes in the sport and what is yep. happening currently for people who are only trying to make money and I want to make it better, not just make it money. Exactly, exactly. So, of course... Um, you know, we, uh, we want to advertise with you one day. So just hit me with your, I think you already sent me your deck. So we're going to try to put some real deck, you know, always be selling, always be closing. That's, Give me that's that a... deck. Um, so hopefully we see some RTS race recaps, maybe 
heavily leveraged recaps towards our team in the future? Well, yeah. I mean, if you're paying, we're only talking <laughs> on <RPS. laughs> Um, So other things that you're doing, um, well, actually, real quick, before we switch gears off the tempo, how much time is that really taking of your, you know, day to day? Is it hours or is it like a couple minutes when you can get it? Yeah, no, I mean, in a way, because it's, it's this business and, and, you know, you're trying to build something, you know, I don't know what this is going to look like in two years, three years kind of thing. Like I'd love to, you know, have some kind of proper, you know, you want to be a buyer, you want to be a buyer for a million dollars. For sure. We're all, you know, motivated people, uh, you know, watch up CNN, we're coming up. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would say like there's in a way you're always, I'm always kind of thinking about it or like, you know, when you're out for, an, sometimes I'm out like for an easy run or an easy ride or something, that's when the ideas are flowing. So there's definitely, I, I don't have a clock on it in terms of how long it takes. I would say like each newsletter, maybe three hours, but I'm always, you know, finding links and, 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 you know, trying to figure out kind of research. what the theme is. We're always doing research. Um, yeah. So it's, man, I don't have a specific amount of time. Okay. That's fair. Kind of I mean, yeah, it's an ongoing it's a good sign. Cause like, I feel like if you were, if I, I, if I didn't like what I did, it would be hell. Like you'd be counting the seconds. It. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's, it's, it definitely takes a lot of bandwidth, a lot of time, but, it feels like it's productive and, and moving in the right direction. I mean, your, your subscription level is, you know, probably what 10, 15,000 now, almost 10,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Good, man. Well, that's awesome. Thanks. I hope, I hope next time it's 50,000 when we get you on the show and only probably. I know, I know. we maybe we'll do that. I, I have to get, you know, 20,000 or something to get back on the show. Otherwise I'm not, gonna, you're not allowing me back on. Well, don't worry. Now that you've been on the podcast again for the second time, our our listeners are definitely all, every one of them are going to go sign up to be a <laughs> pro elite Love level it. special member of the Tempo. And um, so have you thought about two questions, I guess, we, yeah. back into the Tempo. Um, have you just thought about just creating a standalone app that only for, you know, like Credo tries kind of done or something to that? Honestly, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, I, I... I guess like, I don't know, I don't use, maybe I don't use specific apps enough or something, but just, you know, the, the whole email format, you know, everybody's a lot of, I mean, not everybody, a lot of folks are on their email every day and that's just an easy way to reach people. And, you know, they don't have to go into an app, I guess. Uh, for me, it's not something I, I would uh, pursue at this time, but who knows, maybe it's, that is some future option. Something that I've noticed is a trend and it really pisses me off because my wife yeah. refuses to unsubscribe is she gets her emails almost through text messages now. So they've infiltrated yes. your texts. Yeah, no, I, I, I've seen that. And, and yeah, I don't personally like that. So I don't think I would, I would thrust that upon people, but I mean, once we have our microchips or whatever, Neuralink or whatever thing, it's just going to go straight into our brain. So yeah, you know, we're just, we're just keeping moving down the pipeline that way, I guess. Just download it. Um, and back to your comment about ideas, like I had an idea today. Let me know what yes. you think about it. So I was riding on the Southern Parkway, beautiful red rocks, as you can imagine. I'm picturing it. And there at the top of the hill was this gentleman walking with his bike. And I felt so terrible. Obviously I stopped because I'm not a dick. Nice. Like some people just fly, blow by me and don't stop. So I stopped. <laughs> and um, anyways, the, the the short end of that story was he got stranded. He didn't have, he had a spare kit and he blew, had yep. a pinch flat. So he couldn't use his spare tools to recover his ride. I couldn't help him either. Cause all I had was a hand pump and that was it. Mm. So I left him. And I was thinking in the back of my head, I've had this happen to me two times in the last month where my tubeless system has failed or I've sliced and I've had to yeah. call my wife or something. What if there was an app that was developed and it was by like, it was tapped into an Uber system and it was called like, yeah. I flatted. Like that's all it's called is I flatted. Yeah. And you just put your location, someone can come, it's like an SOS and someone can be like, I'll come get you, man. It could be attached to a local bike shop. Um, yeah. I had another idea similar to where like a bike shop could open like a membership system for maintenance and for, by the way, if you flat within the 15 mile radius of the bike shop, we'll come get you. What about nice. this? Yeah, I like that. Um, I definitely like the bike membership thing. You know, 
man, going to a bike shop these days, it's, I guess the time, like time is, is hard because they're always so busy. Uh, but yeah, man, every service is like crazy expensive and, and that's the reality. Uh, but maybe if there was some kind of like subscription service for bike mechanic, I mean, there is like the mobile Velofix thing as well, but again, you don't know the time, but if you, if you were a paying member of this bike shop, whatever, I don't know the number, but you know, you got priority for your thing. That's kind of cool. I do anyways, because I'm me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously we're not all <laughs> Nick Chase family. We ask mere mortals. No, I have to, I have to beg and borrow and plead like everybody else. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Um, okay. Well, you like the idea. I'm glad I, w I just wanted to, I felt the, the urge to share that today and I actually called the bike shop. My buddy is a bike shop owner during my ride. And I was like, I got this great nice. idea. He thought, he thought it was a good one too. So I had to nice. get it. I had to get it second. Hey, well, you got to trademark that one or patent that. I don't know how you would. But... I already did. It's Good. Fine. Good work. It's, it's been spoken, spoken here. Um, all right. So are you guys going to have kids? Yeah, definitely. That's that's the plan. Um, maybe not in the next year or so, but that's definitely in the, in the future for sure. For sure. So what I've noticed, and tell me if you've noticed this also, is yeah. female triathletes have a baby. They get stronger, way stronger. Yeah. The male counterpart, if they're also a triathlete, they suck. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm, I don't know. Hey, I, well, there's probably some science background. There's probably some science science explanation there. Um, you know, uh, and that's I, great. I, real quick, Thank you. I don't want to get canceled. They don't suck. They just have struggles. Thank they just, you. They're not the same. In the same yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, that's a really interesting uh yeah, there's got. I wonder the the physiology though. I mean, you saw Spirig, um, Nicholas Spirig. You know, every time she, you know, she had a kid and and she was able to race at the highest level and win Olympic medals for years and years, and, and that was super impressive. Um, yeah, that's super interesting. Well, our our dear friend. I mean, I'll, I'm already not amazing, so you, you are. Kirsten, yeah, she can she can take that uh, advantage, and you know, whatever. I'll I'll uh, I can I can be stay at home dad. Really. Well, I mean, the the newest candidates on the chopping block, I mean, Lionel Sanders has been racing for a different reason, I think, since he's had a, a child. Sam Long, yeah. I'm, I, I think these things just happen. Um, and even yeah. when I became a stepfather with a 13 and a 15-year-old, things changed there. Mm -hmm. It took me a – I don't think it was as bad for me because I didn't lose sleep. That was the biggest problem. No, no. Although um, teenagers, I feel like those are you – know, I'm a teenager, man. Like, these are my true. friends. I just got two new friends. You just relate. Yeah, you can totally, totally relate. I love that. Yeah, I like look over and I'm like, man, your mom sucks, man. It's yeah. Like... <laughs> no, I don't say that. My wife is lovely. Okay, so, so kids are on the menu. That's amazing. Um, you look like you're what, 27? Um, yeah, and I'm 43. No, I uh, I turned 32 this year. Yeah, 32. It sounds kind of crazy to say. I guess like once I hit 30, I was like, oh. Now it's just like okay, whatever. Maybe when, forty, I'll be like, ah. Yeah. How old is Kirsten? We're the same age. I'm like a month or two older than her. Are you gonna take her name, or is she gonna take your name? I think at this stage, I probably need to take her name. Um, you know, that's just the. It, it, I guess that's kind of where we're at. But uh, she's, I don't know. She, I was asked her if she wanted to take my name and said yes, but she hasn't yet. So maybe she's had <laughs> that. But. How long have you been actually married? uh may 28th 2022 okay so so you're, she's, she still can i mean i can attest that changing your name and watching your wife go through that paperwork is horrendous yes i get it it's a big terrible thing um so anyways yeah i think she's got a lot of name equity brand equity in her name so i feel like changing it up uh, i don't know at this stage maybe who knows maybe later on maybe the tempo really blows up but you know she'll want to or something but Probably. well either way you know you don't have to do anything like that anymore this is a new age that's it we're in 2023 you know it's all good okay so matt you've had some success at short course and long course you're you're kind of the jack of all trades at the moment you're like whenever you put your show up and put your mind to a race it seems like that race is dominated by matt sharp what okay. is what is the future is it long course well i'm gonna murder my dogs hold on <laughs> well nick had to step away from the uh recording here i don't know if we're still recording 
but uh, here we go. Still recording. Someone had to deliver a package during the podcast and friggin' don't bike FedEx. So where was I? What was I? What was I immediately interrupted for? Do you remember? You were saying what's kind of the future, maybe yeah. for racing or something. Is is Kona? Does it matter to you? Has it ever mattered no. to you? Yeah. No. I mean, obviously, it's funny because I lived that short course lifestyle, and that was everything for so long. Um, but obviously, knowing that you know long course and, and, and age group racing and, and Kona, that kind of stuff is actually a, what most of the sport is, 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 you know, non-draft racing. Um, so it's definitely something, you know, I would love to have the opportunity to kind of give it a go to, um, you know, train hard and, and have a good crack at something like Kona, because I feel like just that's, that's a tough, huge part of the sport. You know, that is a massive part of the sport and, and I want to have that experience. Uh, whether I will or not, you know, if if I don't, it's it's going to be okay, you know. Um, but I definitely do want to train for an Ironman specifically and, and and just have a crack at it just to see. Although, to be fair, every time I do a 70.3, um, I feel like I'm less inclined to want to do an Ironman. Just, I don't know, they're hard. And it's, I can't imagine suffering for double plus that amount of time. I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. I, I don't know how I've forgotten this but i've done i think 12 fulls and i've forgotten yeah. most of them um, yeah your mind does that it forgets the pain yeah and i don't know if i want to i mean i was going to do cozumel but now with all this travel for super league and then other yeah. stuff like there's just no way i can dedicate the require like the required time to really show yes. up and do well for as a professional athlete is is extremely tough and that's why for me it's like is it is it losing its luster? Is the are the PTO distances kind of taking a little bit more credibility? Is seventy point three going to go away and just have one hundred k? It just feels like the Iron Distance and how Ironman has just kind of moved races everywhere over time. It's almost like kind of lost a little bit of the luster, to, in my opinion. And how how do you feel about all that? Yeah, no, that's a really good uh, kind of point. Um... I mean, I feel like I've been getting more in touch with the pulse of, uh, you know, the everyday triathletes doing the tempo and, and speaking with a lot of competitors, age groupers and whatnot. So it's been interesting because I feel like the half Ironman or middle distance or whatever is something that is um, still quite popular, still very, you know, uh, I guess it's still growing. You know, they're still adding races at the middle distance versus the Ironman where I feel like you know, they're starting to, to cut back on the amount of them and um, all that kind of stuff. And uh, so I just feel like as a macro kind of trend, you know, the, the Ironman is falling a little bit out of favor, especially because the next cohort of people who are coming into it, you know, folks like like us, like our age, um, you know, when you're raising kids and stuff, like, do you have time to actually train for an Ironman? You know, like the middle distance, it's a it's racing that I feel like you can train for and still somewhat have an okay like balance in life but if you're training for iron man um it doesn't seem to be something that you can just like you know you really have to dedicate the time and, and so i don't know to me it feels like the middle distance is definitely over the next few years it's, it's just only going to keep getting bigger whereas i feel like iron man maybe just plateaus um but definitely doesn't grow uh like 70.3 how about that yeah i think that i'm in, i'm in the alignment there just mostly because i think that the repeat offenders for iron man races are probably getting a little bit burnt out on a lot of the stuff that's been going on like you've got to dedicate so much time and then yep. any anything could happen it could get canceled or it could get flooded out you might not swim there's a lot of variables that go into it that take away from i think the credibility of that distance being something that people can rely on and as a pro athlete it's just gotten so fast. Like I still think it's awesome to watch somebody run a sub two thirty marathon or whatever off, yes. off. I mean, it's ridiculous how fast it's getting. And I feel like that's sad that it's not taking the cake as much as it used to. And I, I feel bad about that. I wish, because yeah. when I was starting this sport, it was watching Crowey and it was watching him race what, what Matt Lee or Chris Lieto and watching the run form and, and blow, getting blown away by what these men were doing and, and women. And so to, to know that that might not be there all the time sucks, but I hope, I hope it can 
rebound. I think the Kona and the Nice thing and Swiss, I don't have a problem with the locations being different, but I just wish yeah. that, that they were both men and female at the same event. That's really the only thing I think we're missing. That's the, and that's the only, I think, unforced error for Iron Man. Um, ultimately, is just not having everybody together. Um, clearly, I mean, when push comes to the shop, if Iron Man wants, you know, more people in these championship world championship races, they're gonna they're not gonna be able to be in Kona. So um, I don't know what happens to Kona, Kona in that sense. But you know, there's lots of places I'm sure that would love to have the tourism revenue and hotel money and everything that uh, an Iron Man World Championship can bring. Uh, and I think we saw that in Nice. You know, they were op coming opening up with welcome, welcome arms, whatever. Um, so yeah, I feel like over the next few years, I mean, I don't know if the Nice Kona split is is set in stone or anything, but the second Iron Man's out of that situation there's uh, every everyone back together you know and just rotate it or whatever how they want to do that but have everyone together for sure yeah okay all good things that i think those are the main triathlon topics i want to hit you on um some non-triathlon lifestyle related stuff um, yes are you religious i'm not no no i kind of grew up not fully religious i had some exposure when i was young but yeah. uh yeah, no, I'm not a I'm not a practicing uh, religious person. That's okay. I somebody asked me me that same question on a podcast recently, and I was like, "Wow, <laughs> I haven't really been talking about that." I feel like I don't know if I can because I'll get canceled or something if I say that. No, I, no, you're good. You're good. Is I, I gotta ask though in 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 Utah, like is is most folks like Mormons? Yeah, I'd say yeah. I don't know the percentage. I don't want to speculate too much but I, I think it's less yeah. than it used to be mainly because sure, mainly sure. the influx of californians to the yeah. state of utah has been quite high so i think that's kind of yeah. consolidated um but i would say there's still about you look on the horizon you can see about a church every quarter mile so yes they're still funded and they're still you I mean they're still here in, in force yeah no i i definitely still i'm sure culturally is still a huge huge thing um i just I, I mean yeah that whole church presence like i i did a road trip from here in boulder to canada and i drive through i think it was ogden utah stop there yeah and it's just you know it's rate like it, it's a big you can just tell like the infrastructure um it's still a, a huge part of it for sure yeah it's been pretty good um yeah so when you do have kids how do you feel about kids in sports? Are you like, uh, you got to be in sports or are you like, Hey, let's figure it out and be patient. I would definitely, uh, air to putting them in sports and, but just, you know, trying to give them the opportunity to compete in many sports. And, and I, I had that luxury of when I was a kid, you know, I actually, my first sport was gymnastics. That's my very first like organized sport thing. My parents put me awesome. in gymnastics when I was super young, but I think it was actually quite good. Um, you know, you learn a lot of just like how to manage your body in motion. And um, I think actually going through my short course career, I had a few crashes on the bike, um, you know, full, full, full uh, I guess, situations there. But I think honestly, that background in gymnastics helped me learn how to fall properly. And so I only had a couple of times where I broke a bone or something, but I crashed a few times, you know, head over handlebars, all that kind of stuff, but generally came out unscathed. And I think having a good, you know, general background in sports uh, for a lot of reasons, but yeah, just from a movement perspective, it's uh, vital. I agree. Moving, understanding where your damn arm is when you're not looking at it in space, like yeah. when you're swimming, that's important to know. <laughs> yeah. And when I went through my, my big growth spurt, maybe, you know, I was pretty sure when I was a kid, now I'm six, four. So maybe that helped, uh, you know, deal with that a little bit better. Although that was still quite a shock. Uh, I think I was like five ten or five actually more than that and then i think i gained like a foot plus in like a year that was crazy oh my god that's massive i bet you were just so, like your feet were massive too yeah baby giraffe vibes you know where they're trying to just control their crazy limbs that's going on in your place um two more quick fire questions what did you eat the night before the new york tribe what was dinner what did i have i had um and i had i think i had spaghetti because I went to this diner near my hotel and it had good looking spaghetti. So I got spaghetti. And then I also think I had a slice of pizza on the way home afterwards. So was it, was it marinara? Pizza. You got za and za. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I think you know, better, even though it was only a little bit distance. 
type of stuff for the, for the golf clubs. So you got some uh, marinara. What did it have meatballs or was it just plain noodles and sauce? No, no, I had like uh, chicken, basic. Ooh, there you go. That's the way to do chicken, it. Spaghetti. Um, final question, kind of a loaded question. Uh, tell me how you feel about Super League start. Next year, we're going to have three Super League races in the U.S. And awesome. Super, League, Super League is also trying to inspire athletes to race Olympic distances again, because that's kind of died. Um, how do you feel about the Super League environment? And would you be a candidate to sharpen up and be a contender to race on our team one day? I think if you saw me, uh, you know, train and whatnot, you, you might retract that statement. But yeah, I mean, I love Super League. I'm super biased towards them because I've raced the championship series before a few times. Um, and it's just, as an athlete, it was one of the best experiences you know, I ever had. Like, they treated us incredibly well, put these races in incredible locations, always had incredible just local support for these races. Um, yeah, I, I can't say enough good things about my experience with Super League. I think definitely awesome, you know, for, for the Super League to go in and I know they, they picked up Malibu and then New York and Chicago shortly after that. Like, that's super cool. I, you know, it's hard because in the U.S. with Iron Man, it feels like Iron Man is just this huge monopoly. Um, so I definitely hope they can at least, like, you know, keep these races, you know, well populated and, and successful. Um, if anyone's going to do it, it's, it's going to be them for sure. Um, and I think it's great. Like I, when I saw them, that they, the announcement that they bought those races, I was like, oh, we're going to have a super league race in New York. We're going to have a super league race in Chicago. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Um, it's more just like, okay, we got to make sure you just fire up the community, um, that surrounds it so that you have this great atmosphere at these races and, and with the, the age groupers and whatnot as well, bringing them into the fold. Um, but I do think they can pull it off for sure. And yeah, I mean, I love Super League. I would love to race Super League. It's just... Um, you got to make it through the first know. round. If I can make it through the first round, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it depends on, uh, you know, the incentives. But I would definitely, if, if I was needed or whatever, certainly would love to Super League. Because it's, it's some of the most fun I've ever had racing. And definitely for the folks at home, if you haven't watched Super League races, watch them. And if you get the chance to go out, definitely highly recommend that. Because it's, you know, the best athletes in the world just crushing it over these short distances it's incredibly dynamic it's super cool thanks thanks for saying those couple of plugs of course we're big fans too um yeah and getting you out getting you out to to a race i think would be stellar in any any regard yeah. even if you're coming out just to do some tempo news or something i i, I would have i would have come out to malibu but that race was the same weekend and, and i talked to the person about it and she was like oh you should go race so uh, she made the call because i was planning on coming no, nah, I'm glad. As an aside, you know, I was, I knew Malibu was on Saturday, New York Chai was on Sunday. And as I was walking towards the start line, I see, you know, Super League CEO Michael and owner Leonid, you know, walking towards me. And I, my mind just was like, wait, what? Like, these guys aren't in Malibu, but they, you know, take a red eye or whatever. Um, yeah. And so I had a lot of respect for them, you know, just showing up that next day and, being boots on the ground, uh, making sure things were good and, and whatnot and checking in on their, their asset. And it was cool to see them again. It was awesome. Yeah, I can I can tell you for sure they are focused on growing the Chicago and New York triathlon to, you know, 10 or 15% in the next few years. They want more, good. more participation. And I think that's, you know, we could have another race in, you know, a Boston or an Austin or a Miami. Yeah. I think, I think the versatility that is there and the buy-in certainly is there. We just got to make people aware of it even i had one of the we're working on some shram development opportunities and even the head one of the head guys at shram was like what super league again i'm like you butthole i'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah come on dude come on man you got to know what's up it's uh, perfect i mean you know the you know the, the, the nfl football kind of attention span pretty short you know i think super league kind of like falls for triathlon it's it's kind of in that uh, region so I think it could definitely be successful. It's more just like ensuring that um, the actual like age races that help support whatever um, are, you know, well subscribed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. 
Well, with that, I think that's a great note to end. And I appreciate you coming on your time and you know anything that we can do to help support the tempo, we will and uh, keep working Thank hard. You. I know I know it's tough to get news out there and there's a lot of opinions and I'm sure yeah, you- The algorithm. Oh, you're, fi- you're always fighting the algorithm because it's ever changing. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the battles, but I think that really does weed out the people who don't belong anyways. Like if you're going to stick around through all the- ups and downs and you're a valid source of news for our sport and dude that's amazing so good job thank you thank you appreciate it and we'll see an indian wells i'll probably be a corpse by that time if i keep working at this rate but i'll still be there in, in uh, supporting yes, I mean, talk to jim talk to your coach say jim i need to see workouts you know roi for time that's kind of my my mantra with training so you know whenever you get the best roi for your time that's the that's the move i just told them to teach me how to train while I'm sleeping. That's the next okay. phase. Yeah, that's that'll happen. Uh, I'm sure there's a device for that. It's called Wahoo Kicker Sleep. <laughs> it, strap, it straps you in and it moves your yep. legs for you. It's the it, best. Just, it just electrifies your muscles. As you <laughs> it's the next phase, man. Hacking yep. it. All right, Matt, we'll, uh, we'll get... We'll get you on again in a couple of months and uh, we'll see you soon in Indy Wells. And all the best and all the best for Kirsten and her back. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it.